everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. I take the table dynamics and I relate those to our everyday lives. Guys, we got to talk. Come on in here. Let's get started. Come on. Well, hey, y'all. Welcome back to the podcast. Shout out to all of you out there getting ready to work hanging out with me. I know how it goes. I listen to many podcasts while I'm in my bathroom. I keep it down low so I don't disturb, you know, anybody. But so anyway, so welcome back, everybody. Now, listen, before you leave me today, whether you leave at the end or in the middle, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. That's your way of letting me know you enjoy our time together. You may not agree with everything, but you enjoy our time together. Now, I told y'all that I was going to come to you after the week played itself out and see if we get any leaks of what's happening behind the scene. And I was going to give some, give it some time. And then I was going to come talk to you fully about my view on the view about Whoopi Goldberg's return, because that's what we do here. This is not that podcast though, but I didn't want to wait. So I had to bring you this because there's been a conversation happening online with various outlets like the Daily Mail and others who've been reporting on, they're not sure why the view brought Whoopi back early. If you read the Daily Mail article, then you know they broke it down. She was suspended on a Wednesday and she was not supposed to return until February 16th. But they brought her back early. She came back on Monday. Hello, 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 and welcome to The View. And yes, I am back. And so they're saying they don't know why and they don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Well, guys, I think I have the answer. I think I know why now they brought Whoopi back, okay? Now, I didn't have a problem with them bringing her back. Again, I'm just telling you what they said. I personally was glad to see the woman. I was glad that, you know, the universe gave her another chance because I really did feel like, you know, she made a blunder. She confused her personal opinion and distorted historical facts. When people tried to point that out to her, she still didn't see it. She still didn't see it. And, you know, yes, she apologized. We went through all of that. But again, as I said, you know, Emotionally mature adults do understand that an apology doesn't mean that you don't get consequences. An apology just means that it was an apology. But depending on what was done, there still needs to be consequences to our bad decisions or yes, even a mistake that we make. That's how life works. And it'll serve all of us well to just accept that and not not be little kids emotionally and say, well, I apologize. So why did you put me out in suspension? I apologize. So why can't I eat lunch with all my friends? No, that's not how life works. Sometimes there's grace and mercy and sometimes there are consequences. Okay, which could also be looked at as grace and mercy, which is what she got because she didn't get fired. They could have easily fired her and they would have had grounds to fire her in this this culture we live in now. But they didn't. They just gave the woman two weeks suspension and they brought her back early. So I will tell you what I think has happened. We have now, as the public, gotten some information that the, the executives got, I believe, several days ago. The Nielsen ratings have now been released to the public. And we have learned that the full week that she was gone, which was the show week of February 7th through 11th, The View had the lowest ratings they had of the season. I don't think it's a, it's a coincidence that she came back the following Monday, early from her suspension. What we've heard as the public is that when the Nelson, Nielsen ratings come out to us, they've already, they've already given those ratings to, the, the executives have access to these ratings all the time. They have access to the numbers in real time is what I mean. And so I think it's, pretty clear to me, although I recognize I could be wrong. (laughs) My opinion on this could be wrong, but I think this makes perfect sense. To me, I'm using my common sense here. One plus one equals two. That week, the lowest ratings of the season come back Monday. Okay. Now I'm going to break this down for you because I want to read something to you where they're going to actually break down what actually happened with the numbers during that week. Okay. But let me lay the foundation here. I want all of us to keep in mind They're looking at two weeks here. The Nielsen ratings are looking at two weeks. The first week where all of this popped off was actually the first week of February. Okay, so January 31st was a Monday. That's when she said what she said about the Holocaust. Tuesday was February 1st. She was working that day on the show. She apologized. They had anti-defamation league president Jonathan Greenblatt on the show. We learned Tuesday night 
And so did the other employees that Mrs. Kimberly got when the new ABC News president suspended her effective immediately. And according to the Daily Mail, the way they broke that down was her uh, suspension would have taken place starting Wednesday, February 2nd. And the 14 days was supposed to start from there. Even if the 14 days started Tuesday, she still was back early. So to me, it doesn't really matter. She still came back early than earlier than the 14 days. Okay. Now, so that first week of February, she did work that week. So she was not gone the full week. The only week she was gone the entire week was the week of seventh, the seventh through the 11th, Monday through Friday. And of course, she came back. The next week, which is this week, February 14th, which is Monday. Okay. So now that you got that, now I'm going to read this to you. Now it's not long at all. So I want you to try to stay with me because it's very, very important for those of us who really want to see what the execs saw there. Okay. Now I'm not going to read this entire article to you because some of it we already know. I'm just going to focus on the parts about the the lowest ratings of the season. Okay. So it says, according to the latest figures released by Nielsen, The View experienced a season low in total viewers and their total viewers make up women ages 18 to 49 and women ages 25 to 54 during the week of February 7 through 11, 2022. The only full week without the show's moderator will be Goldberg after she was suspended for comments she made on Monday, January 31st broadcast. So they're going to break down these numbers for us, okay, for that week. So the article goes on to say, for the week of February 7th through 11th, the view averaged just 2.195 million viewers, placing it ahead of General Hospital, Today with Hoda and Jenna, GMA3, What You Need to Know, and The Talk. The show would have also beaten out Days of Our Lives in total viewers, but the soap opera is currently on hiatus due to NBC's ongoing coverage of the 2022 Winter Olympics from Beijing. Now here they get into the details. They're going to first tell us about the numbers for women ages 18 to 49. So it says, although The View remained in 10th place in women 18 to 49, the talk show was down week to week, hitting a new season low with a rating of only 0.26, which is just barely ahead of GMA3, What You Need to Know, which had a rating of 0.25 and the talk, which had a rating of 0.23. Okay, now they're going to break down the numbers for women 25 to 54. It says, meanwhile, in women 25 to 54, the view again ranked 10th with a 0.39 rating, also a season low. GMA3 averaged a 0.36 rating. And the talk averaged a 0.34 rating. Now here here it is. Compared to the full week of January 31st, 31st to February 4th, which is the week where this all happened, the view was down 283,000 viewers week to week. In fact, compared to the same week last year, the view was down a whopping 723,000 thousand viewers. Now I won't again read the rest of it to you. For our conversation, that's what was germane. So guys, I think this is the reason that they brought her back early. Now, let's then let's now jump to this. We all know here in the US there is a season called sweeps season. S W E E P S sweeps season arguably, arguably the most important weeks of the, of any show's season where some shows, because the ratings really matter during sweeps weeks, they will do any and everything. I remember Wendy Williams saying that one day, one time during the sweeps, her executives wanted her to take her wig off and show the world her real hair. Cause Wendy had hair. It just was very thin because of her graves, you know? And so she said, I, now I will do anything for sweeps, but that right there ain't doing. <laughs> okay. So when I tell you some of these shows want these people to go all out, they do. And some people even suspect that this whole whoopee situation was for sweeps. I don't know, guys. To me, that's really extreme. But again, maybe, you know, you never know. You never know. That to me would be like extreme. That would be like taking the wig off type situation. Like to me, something shows just shouldn't do for sweeps. But, you know, I don't. 
I don't know. But there are people who have that, that conspiracy theory out there. All right. So we're in the sweep season right now. And I think that when they saw these numbers last week, they said, we just got to bring her back early. We can't afford during sweeps to lose any viewers. We can't afford to get behind. So, hey, I don't know. What do you guys think about it? I, for me, again, as I said, I don't think this is coincidental. I think to me, um, when they made this decision, and I agree with the decision they made. At first, I thought they should fire her. If you were with me on all the commentary, you know, I, I thought they should fire her. And then after I heard what she said on Stephen Colbert, I came back and I said, well, now I've changed my mind. I don't think they should fire her, but maybe they should write her up or suspend her or something, you know, because this was extremely egregious. And again, I understand a lot of people don't think it was. Listen, we're done with that. <laughs> you think it wasn't. I think it was. Let's just agree to disagree and go on about our lives. Okay. Some people are saying maybe they brought it back early because you had Jonathan Greenblatt who went on other programs after they suspended her. And he was saying, in essence, that he didn't think that was necessary. And so people saying, well, maybe they just acquiesced to all the pressure of the public saying it wasn't necessary to go that far. She apologized, let, let the woman alone, let her come back to work. So people say that's it. But see, I don't know if they've seen these numbers. <laughs> I think it's the numbers because the numbers mean the moolah. The moolah. Now, as I transition to the end of our time together, let me just say this. There are some people who will hear this and say, oh, see there, see, 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 that just proves the show can't make it without Whoopi Goldberg. I don't interpret these numbers that way. I am an OG viewer like many of you, and we have been through many things with this show as viewers, longtime viewers. Remember when Barbara Walters, the creator of the show, when they pushed her out the door in 2014? Now, whole different set of executives back then, okay? What did people say? Oh, it's over. It's over. <laughs> the show can't make it without Barbara because hundreds of thousands of people left when Barbara left. But guess what? Show is still on. Remember when Rosie O left? Rosie O'Donnell, who did a great job leading the table. People said the same thing. Oh, the show can't make it without Rosie. They can't. They can't. And who are the people saying this? Normally, it's the people who are fans, who are who, are, who really love that person. You know? And so they, they can't make it. They can't make it without Rosie. But guess what? Show is still on without Rosie. And if something were to happen where Whoopi was gone, the show would make it without Whoopi. So I think life has shown all of us that we need to let things play themselves out before we rush to make a decision. Especially when we have history on our side. So we can look back at the history of this show. The show has made it before when some of the big names left. Whoopi would be no different. Because see, to say that a show in this day and time can't make it without a certain person is to say that that person is the coup de grace. No. You know how many talented, wonderful people there are out there? So no. Now, if this were the Whoopi Goldberg show, and remember Whoopi used to have her own talk show and she left for some reason or was sick. Yeah. In such case, we could say this show won't make it without her because it's her show. She's the only host, blah, blah, blah. But if you're looking at even what's happening with the Wendy Williams show, you see that that way of thinking needs to go by the wayside. People thought this show was over until they saw Sherry Shepard, because as as human beings, we can make the transition that, OK, this isn't working. Now it's time for someone else to come in. And who knows? The show still may not work. You know, once Sherry gets in there fully and does the thing, who knows? But what we know now is they said that with Sherry, they had the highest ratings they'd had in a long time. That includes even when Wendy was sitting there. So as I end, I want to say this to all my younger listeners. When I say younger, I mean 18 to 35. I want you to train yourself in life to let the dust settle before you come to conclusions about things. And if you can reference some history, do that first. Do that as well. While you're letting the dust settle, there have been so many people that have rushed to make a decision on something when they didn't have all the information or they didn't reference history or the past. And then they made some decision that was detrimental to their life and it took them years to recover from it. So for me, that's, again, one of the reasons why I'm saying here that this show will make it without Whoopi if whatever were to happen. Now, now, maybe. The show could make it if they lost two of their matriarchs at the same time. See that, but see, 
in that case, it's an issue of timing and personality. So if Whoopi and Joy, the two matriarchs, were to leave at the same time, yeah, that would be a strong hit that the show may not could recover from. But for now, what we know is they're both sitting there. And we know Joy is supposed to retire in August of this year. We're going to, you know, see if what she told everybody she was going to do if she's going to do it. But for now, they're both there. And the show is doing just fine. So thanks so much for tuning in. Let us know your thoughts below. Are you with the people um, in the internet sphere that say, this just proves it. This just proves it. If they would have left her out for another week or however many more days that were left of her 14-day suspension, the show would have gone down the drain. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with the people who say this just proves that the show acquiesced to all the pressure and they brought her back early? What, what part do you think or what role, I should say, do you think the numbers played in all of this? Seeing as we know they had the numbers before we got them. I don't know, guys, but this is my view on The View. It really is. I, I think they brought this brought Whoopi back because they were taking a hit and they just couldn't afford to do that during sweeps. Um, and I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the, the sweep season starts February to, and ends in March. Sometime in February and sometime in March. I could have that wrong. I'm sure those of you in the industry who are listening can um, graciously let us know the correct answer there. But the bottom line for me is I'm glad to see her no matter what the reason, (laughs) I'm glad that she got another chance. I'm glad they didn't fire her. I see a change in her attitude. And I talked to you guys about that yesterday. I can see a change in her attitude as someone who's a longtime viewer. I've watched her for, what has she been there? 14, 15 years. I've watched her on and off because I haven't watched every single show of every single season. And so I, I know her general demeanor on this show, as those of you do as well, who are OG viewers. And we can definitely tell there's a difference in her demeanor. And sometimes that's all we need. We need something to happen that will course correct us and course correct us and let us know, wait a minute, I got too full of myself here. <laughs> I started to think I was all that in a bag of chips. That's what you say in the 90s. And so you know what? Somebody had to bring me down to earth and let me know, wait a minute, girl, this ain't your own talk show. You're an employee. And those folks got policies and they got a new president and she ain't playing. And you better believe it. And you better come and do a better job here because you're capable of it and stop taking this job for granted. How many people would love to be making what we learned? And we don't know if the numbers are accurate. We got this from the Daily Mail that she makes $96,000 a week. And all you have to do to make that kind of money is keep up with what's going on in the news. Prepare for these shows. And what do we mean by prepare? We've talked about a million times. We learn from Sunny. We learn from all the other women. All they mean is prepare is read the stuff they give you. Read the folks books. And Whoopi's case, because she's dyslexic, she listens to, listens to books on Audible. Read, prepare. And then all you got to do is sit there and talk about it. Girl, you're making a whole lot of money from doing really n- n- what some people would consider what most folks do every day, which is keep up with the news and discuss it with their family and friends or their spouse. So we could see how it could get easy to take such a job for granted because technically speaking, it is easy when that's all you really got to do. So I think this was good for everybody all the way around. And so honestly, guys, I I love Whoopi and I'm just glad to see her back. And I hope that nothing else happens. I hope that this was all, you know, oh, this is it because she's had a whole bunch of controversies and she got away with a bunch of stuff. Hopefully this will be it. And so that that's that's my view on the view so guys listen thanks so much for tuning in this is my view on the view a podcast all about abc's the view where i make the views table relatable don't forget if you enjoyed me hit that thumbs up button i'll talk to you on the next one here we go here we go again trying hard but you want to be my friend